Cognitive Restructuring. For difficult cognitive distortions, we have several techniques to help tearing them down. These techniques should be used whenever cognitive distortions are identified. With enough repetition, the cognitive distortions will be extinguished and replaced with new balanced thoughts. Here are the techniques. Socratic questioning. Socratic questioning goes back to Socrates, the Greek philosopher who emphasized the importance of questioning as a way to explore complex ideas and uncover assumptions. This approach has been adopted as a way to challenge cognitive distortions. Once a cognitive distortion has been identified, this technique is simple. The cognitive distortion will be assessed by asking a series of questions. Therapists can set an example by asking these questions of their clients, but ultimately the client should learn to question their own thoughts. Examples are, is this thought realistic? Am I basing my thoughts on facts or feelings? What is the evidence for this thought? Can I be misinterpreting the evidence? Am I viewing the situation as black and white when it's really more complicated? Am I having this thought out of habit? or do facts support it? Anyone can quickly spill out answers just to have the exercise done. However, the value of Socratic questioning comes from the thought behind each answer. So we recommend to spend at least one to three minutes on each question to get the most out of this exercise. Second, Often, cognitive distortions are just an exaggerated view of reality. Before a first date, a person may find themselves overwhelmed with anxiety, thinking of all the things that might go wrong. Maybe their date won't like the way they look, or maybe they'll make a fool of themselves. With a decatastrophizing technique, we ask very simple questions. What if? What's the worst thing that could happen? Like in this example. Client. I always worry that my daint won't like how I look or I'll make a fool of myself. This leads me to getting so nervous that I do make a fool of myself. Therapist. So what if those things come true? What if your date doesn't like how you look or you make a fool of yourself? Client, well, we probably won't have a second date. Therapist, what if you don't have a second date? What happens then? Client, hmm, well, I guess nothing. I just won't see them again. This sequence of questioning helps to reduce the irrational level of anxiety associated with cognitive distortions. It highlights the fact that even the worst case scenario is manageable. In this exercise, putting thoughts on trail, your client will act as a defense attorney, a prosecutor, and a judge. First, your client will act as a defense attorney by defending their negative thought. Ask them to make an argument for why the thought is true. Remember to stick to verifiable facts. Interpretation, guesses and opinions are not allowed. Next, your client has to act as the prosecutor. Now they will present evidence against the negative thought. Just like in the previous step, require that they stick to facts while excluding opinions. Finally, your client has to act as the judge. 
they will review the evidence and deliver a verdict. The verdict should come in the form of rational thought. An example could look like this. The thought. My partner probably hates me. For example, after an argument about housework. The defense. The argument in defense of the thought. We often argue about minor things like course. My partner gets angry with me during these arguments. I don't always complete my portion of the housework. The judge could not admit. I couldn't tell my partner doesn't like me by the way they looked at me because it is an interpretation. The prosecution, the arguments against the thought. When we do argue, we always find a way to resolve the problem. We've been together for 10 years. My partner says they love me. My partner gets angry with everyone from time to time. The verdict. Arguments are sometimes upsetting, but overall, this is a healthy and loving relationship. There's no evidence that my partner hates me. Some more techniques are understanding the idiosyncratic meaning, which is more like a skill to get to the bottom of the client's problem if he or she uses vague language in the case of a depression. Reattribution is a technique in which the client is encouraged to consider possible alternate causes for, of events. Cognitive rehearsal. The coach and the client work together to find ways in which a certain problem can be handled. By rehearsing ways of dealing with a particular situation, the client is then better equipped for when such situations should arise. Guided imagery. Guided imagery means the coach helps the client to evoke and generate mental images that simulate or recreate.